Student ownership in the mathematics classroom. It's the difference between students who go through the motions and students who identify as mathematicians and problem solvers. So, how can we help students own their mathematical experience? I'm Dan Finkel. I'm a PhD in mathematics and the founder of Math for Love. I've come to Australia to see how rich mathematical experiences can transform the learning of students and the practice of teachers. At this point, you've launched the task to inspire student curiosity, and you've kept them engaged in productive struggle. Now, as the class draws to an end, it's time to wrap up the experience. Let's take a look at how some teachers close their class. 30 seconds, I'll get everyone to come back to the front again. Or would you like to just do that now? Are we ready to do that now? Yeah, yeah let's all go, come up to the front. So whoever's got a tool with them, bring it along and then challenge me to a game. If you understand how the system works, then you can um, win the game. So putting them in multiples of three, kind of, it's simpler to understand. If the second player takes two, I'll take one. If the person takes one, I'll take two. Okay, beautiful, very nice. You want to go to 20? My goodness. Very daring, I like that, bravery. Fantastic. Well done. The three trap. Okay, I can see that you've got a method. Emre's a NIM master right now. Okay, right, so congratulations. Recess is in like five minutes. Okay, three, two, sit. We're gonna wind things up. So Ellery, for example, you used negative decimal numbers, Thomas used decimal numbers, but even if you didn't, so if you used fractions, if you used whole numbers that were really large, I think someone at this table even tried with infinity. You guys thought you'd cracked it. You thought you'd found an answer where the answer was not one. Can you talk to us a little bit about what happened and also how you tested it and, when you, and what you realised, what you learnt? We got to um, subtract it by the original number and we thought we cracked it and it would have equaled zero. Yeah, so they came really close and, um, and on first look, even I went, oh, hang on a minute, something looks interesting there. And Dan walked over from another table and he said, hang on a minute, that looks right. So he went over here. Do you want to explain what you did to test it? 0 0.5 plus 2 is 2. Well, what's 0 0.5? 0 0.5 is the decimal value for a half. That's right. So he checked it by doing it in decimal form. 2.5 times 2 is 5. On 1.5 minus 0 0.5, which the is the original number, number, equals 1. Yeah. So what happened is, is that the guys who, who thought they, they cracked the code and actually found a number that their final answer wasn't 1 actually missed a step, which is, that's okay, that happens. That's part of our process of learning. So well done. I'm going to give you just a couple more minutes. If you haven't already come up with a claim or a theory, I would like you to put one together. Any findings that you've come across and then try and support it with a couple of examples to support your claim or theory, yes? Yes, we do for twice. Show me so your in five initial five square, five. then you cut it into a small square and then little squares around the outside. And what numbers did you find using that theory? Are you just going to continue to freely explore and hope that you come up with one of those numbers? Or are you going to force yourself to try and find the answer to one of those numbers? Every group has come up with something very, very interesting, so well done. I would like one spokesperson from each group to share what they've found. We found a number multiplied by itself to make the initial square and then we divided that up into smaller squares and um, we found that you can divide the larger squares up within that initial square to increase the number. We found any number that is squareable uh, can make, be made up of square numbers. So for example, we had um, six, which is made up of one box that would contain Four. Four, and then individual boxes, which are square numbers. What did you and your group come up with? Um, if we made one big square and added the squares around it, we got even numbers that were squareable. Good. Four. And they were, sorry? There, was, um, there were even numbers above four that were squareable. Hopefully you found some interesting things. And sometimes when you're at home, at the most unexpected times, you might think about something that helps your understanding of this, yes? That's how mathematics works. Well done. Uh, thanks for the lesson. Our main goal in wrapping up is to help students reflect 
articulate their thoughts, and take ownership of the experience. Some teachers like to have a student or group of students present their ideas to the class, or just have a more informal discussion about what people have learned, notice, and wonder. Another great technique is to have students pair up and share their thoughts with each other, which gives everyone a chance to speak and listen. This is also a great time to point out how using a particular tool or visualization helped lead to a breakthrough. And also getting students to see that these tools might then apply you know, into another problem solve. As students share their ideas, their insights, their solutions, and their further questions, this is a great moment to underscore just how much progress students have made. Isn't it incredible that what was totally mysterious at the beginning of the class is now at least partly understood? What you know right now has allowed you to predict the future. Isn't that something cool? Finally, give students credit and ownership over the arguments they came up with during class. Point out to them how those arguments only came about because they were willing to persevere and learn from their mistakes. That's really the deeper lesson of rich learning. It's hard to learn, but after you accomplish it, it feels great. And then you know that in other life problems, it's easier to solve them because you know skills in math. Another nice question to ask students is whether they feel they could replicate the activity with family or friends or a sibling. And now I feel I can own it and show it to anyone else. Most important is that students see that the struggle they put in to understand has helped them grow as learners and problem solvers. Because when it's easy, you could just write down all the answers, you're not actually learning. But when it's a challenge, it's difficult, and it's actually like a brain exercise. I feel like I learn more when I come up with rules myself rather than copy what teachers put up for me. And if they've owned the experience this time, they'll be ready to meet the challenge of rich learning in the future. So there's our framework for rich learning. And on the face of it, it seems simple but it can be deceptively subtle, and you want to give yourself space to experiment, to have things not go right all the time, and to learn from your own mistakes as a teacher. To begin with, preparation is absolutely key. So give yourself that time to anticipate how students will respond, and be ready with your own thoughts. When you launch the task, keep it concise, highlight the mystery, and really focus on lighting student curiosity so they'll be motivated to dive into the productive struggle. You can sustain them in that work by offering tools or questions or even hints, or sometimes seeing that students are working well without you and just stepping back. Finally, wrap up in a way that lets students own their arguments and their own experience as mathematicians. Rich learning can transform your mathematics classroom and the lives of your students. And this isn't just for advanced students. Everyone can benefit from rich learning, regardless of student background or classroom means. I meet adults who still remember the teacher who changed their life because they believed in them. Fundamentally, rich learning is based in a belief in our students and their capacity to grow and flourish as mathematical thinkers. We've seen students suffer in math class. Rich learning gives us the opportunity to help all students thrive by sharing with them the best of what mathematics has to offer. Mathematics.